What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to the bench for another episode of our PBY Catalina here on the Pearl Harbor Group Build. Today, we're going to go ahead and finish off the base, get the Catalina attached down to it, and we're going to be done with this awesome little project. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. Now, I'm picking up pretty much where I left off last time. I want to go ahead and glue in this little support rod that uh, is going to go ahead and support the Catalina, and also this is going to act as a channel for all of the wires for the engines. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this into the base but I want to make sure that whatever I do it's going to remain as watertight as possible because I'm going to go ahead and start using some resin and resin has a habit of going anywhere and everywhere where you don't want it to go especially if there's an opening or something you know it's going to go right into that opening and leak everywhere so I don't want that to happen I'm going to go ahead and seal it off using some Mod Podge I'm also going to use Mod Podge as a glue to go ahead and glue that little rod down into the base that should be pretty decent we can let it dry and move on from there I'm also going to go ahead and seal up the very bottom of this little divot that I cut out for the hole. I just want to make sure we're nice and watertight so that we don't have resin leaking all over the place and making a huge mess. So we're going to go ahead and just add a little bit of Mod Podge all around this area. Now we got to let this dry though, and that's going to probably take about 12 to 24 hours just to be on the safe side. So I'm going to go ahead and do a lot of that in this episode. We're going to go ahead and make a cut and let things dry and then come back and push on. So that's going to be kind of a common theme throughout the entire final episode. But let's go ahead and let this dry and then we'll be back and check it out. So we are back and it's been about 16 or so hours and this is looking pretty good. All the Mod Podge is ready to go. So now we're going to go ahead and just glue down the PPY to the base and we're going to move on to the other sections like resin and all of that good stuff. We're going to use some Mod Podge to go ahead and seal the aircraft down to the base. And that's going to be great because Mod Podge is super non-aggressive. It's not going to eat anything. It's not going to distort the plastic. It's not going to ruin anything there on the model or the base. So that's going to be really, really helpful and it's going to be safer too. On top of that, we will also eventually pour resin and resin will also act as a glue and will trap the Catalina down onto the base. But that's going to be later, guys. Let's go ahead and focus on first off getting the PBY glued down to the base, get the side protections all nicely cut out of foam core to make sure the resin doesn't fly everywhere when I go ahead and pour it. And then we'll glue it down to the base and get ready for that resin. And we are back and as you can see the sides are all nicely glued down the Catalina isn't going anywhere that Mod Podge worked like a charm so we're going to move on to resin. Now I'm going to be using this Art and Glow clear casting resin. It's the same brand I used last time when I was working on the A6M2N. This is a one to one equal part resin and hardener so we're going to go about four ounces of resin and four ounces of hardener. I've got my two cups here marked out ready to go and then once we have those nicely poured out then we'll go ahead and mix that in a third cup just to make sure we don't have too many air bubbles and then we can go ahead and also tint that down with some form of clear color. So I think that's going to be pretty decent to do. In terms of clear color I thought about maybe using some clear green but I think now nah, I'm going to go with clear blue and we're just going to take like a couple of drops of that drop it in and then we'll mix it up with this paintbrush. We'll just use the tail end of that just to make sure that everything is nicely mixed and we're good to go. And of course, during the whole procedure, I'll have the instructions just sitting off on the side, ready to go, just in case I need a little bit of extra details into what I'm doing. And of course, the last thing we will have to go ahead and use a heat gun to go ahead and pop all the little air bubbles that might form. I think inevitably we're going to have bubbles and the heat gun should actually bring those to the surface of the resin and just pop them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with this resin. We're going to get everything poured, mix it up, dye it down a little bit with that clear blue, pour it into the mold, hit it with a heat gun, and hopefully, fingers crossed, this turns out well. Also, it will need about 24 hours dry 
dry time. So I'll go ahead and pour this now. I'll leave it set for 24 hours. Come on back and we'll check it out. So let's go ahead and get in there for time lapse number two. Let's go ahead and play with some resin. All right, guys, we are back. And as you can see, the base is all cured. The resin is really firm and it looks great. Super clear, almost like a piece of glass. So that's pretty awesome. But of course, we have to go ahead and move on now with water effects and all that great stuff. So first things, let's go ahead and pull off these foam core pieces so we can go ahead and start messing around with making that water look a little bit more active. And I'm going to be a little bit frank here. I think I put too much glue on these foam core pieces. So that might be a little challenging, but we'll see how it goes. And we are about, I'd say about 30 minutes into removing these foam core pieces and oh boy did I put way too much glue on here they are not coming off very easily so I'm gonna have to go ahead and reapproach my technique just slightly I'm gonna go ahead and pull off what I can and because it's got the outer portion of that foam core that's stuck to the base I'm gonna take a little bit of water just wet these then it should hopefully peel right off and here we are guys our base is looking good a couple of the pieces did not come off all the way but I don't care it's fine it's gonna be covered up with balsa wood anyway and it won't really affect the spacing at all so I'm happy with it we're going to move on from there. I want to go ahead and take a little bit of time on this resin base as it is. First off, resin likes to do something called creep. It actually creeps up any sort of vertical surface. It'll just slowly kind of encroach upwards. So we have to come back here and just shave off a little bit of that resin creep. I'm not going to take it too far flush, but I want to go ahead and minimize these. So when we go ahead and add our water details, it doesn't look as prominent. Now, speaking of details there for the water, I'm going to go ahead and use this water effects by Woodland Scenics. So what I used on my zero float plane back a few years ago, and so I'm hoping that it works just as well now. We're going to use it over the entire base to make it look a little less glass-like. It's super smooth right now, and I wanted to kind of add a little bit of agitation, and this should hopefully do that. So fingers crossed it works out. I also want to go ahead and do a little bit more work with some facial tissue like Kleenex or something like that. I've seen a lot of guys on YouTube go ahead and make wakes and waves using facial tissue or toilet paper. I don't have any toilet paper I want to go ahead and use on this, but I do have tons of two-ply facial tissue. So we're going to go ahead and use one of those and we're going to make some agitated churned up water and a little bit of a wake coming off the back of the hole. Not sure if that's exactly 100% realistic, but I'm good with it. I'm also going to use some more Mod Podge to go ahead and seal everything up and I want to go ahead and replicate that frothy water spray and all that, I'm going to go ahead and add in some cotton balls, kind of shred it apart to add in that extra, you know, water vapor, mist, and agitated churned up water. So we have a lot to do, guys. I'm not sure how this is going to go, but we're going to give it a try. We'll be back with, I'm hoping, a pretty decent looking water base. Let's do it, guys. Let's keep on pushing on.
All right, everybody, so we are back. And as you can see, the Catalina is coming along. I'm not exactly sold on the water base or on the cotton balls for that kind of misty water effect. I'm not really sure what I like or what I don't like, but we've done it. So we're gonna go ahead and just keep pushing on. I think it needs more though, to be honest. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more in terms of cotton balls. I'm gonna shred a couple more. I'm gonna add more details to it, make it even bigger and more pronounced, move on from there and not worry about it. I did watch a couple of videos that show a Catalina taking off from the water and it does kick up a lot of froth and a lot of mist it creates quite a show. So I'm gonna to try to replicate that as much as I can. I have no idea how it's gonna go, but we're just gonna play around and see what happens. Also, one thing I'm not exactly excited about is I think the water is a little bit too textured. I think there should be areas that's a bit smoother. And to be honest, I'm using the wrong material. I should actually be using some sort of water effects that can be used to create rippling water. That's something that Woodland Scenics also makes, but I don't have any. So we're just kind of stuck. We're just gonna use what we have and try our best. That actually probably Probably would be ideal because it would give us a nice subtle undulation of the water whereas I can't really achieve that with what I have here to work with at least I don't know how to what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of tape we're gonna tape off all four sides of the base then I'm gonna go ahead and grab some Woodland Scenics realistic water that's something that Joe gave me I've never used it before but it's supposed to be really easy to use and it's supposed to dry crystal clear so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour it over the water sections here on the base and that's hopefully gonna go ahead and cut down on any of the overly exaggerated stippling effects that I did on the water and maybe smooth everything out. So I don't know if that's going to work, but we're going to try it. We really don't have anything to lose. So we're just going to go for it, see what happens. Okay, so we've gone ahead and poured one side of the Realistic Water by Woodland Scenics. It comes out, as you can see, kind of murky and really kind of opaque. It's supposed to dry crystal clear though, so I'm gonna go ahead and not worry just yet. I'm gonna give it 24 hours to dry and fully cure. Then we'll come back and we'll see if it stays murky. If it does, we'll have to just reassess the entire situation. But right now, I'm gonna go ahead and trust that it's going to turn crystal clear and not worry about it. On the plus side, this is actually gonna give us a little bit more tack for the cotton balls that we shredded and we tore up there along the fuselage. This is going to kind of seep into the very base of that and it's going to create almost like a glue so those aren't going to go anywhere. But I do want to add more as well so that's going to be kind of the next step. But I say we give this 24 hours to dry then we come on back and we see how it looks and what happened. So we'll be back in 24 hours guys. Okay, so it's been 24 hours and I'm very relieved to say that yes, the Woodland Scenics Realistic Water does turn crystal clear. So that is awesome. And it has done what I wanted it to do. It's kind of cut down on the over stippling effect that I did with my water effects. So that's good. That's what I was going for. It's not perfect, mind you. Again, I really should be using some form of like rippling water effects that you can get by Woodland Scenics. I don't have that. So again, we're just gonna use what we have and play around with it. Because this is a learning curve, if nothing else. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off all the tape and then just like I did before I'm going to use my box cutter knife and we're just going to slice off a little bit of that creep along the edge just so it looks a little bit smoother and not as pronounced. Then I also want to go ahead and come in with a little bit of Tamiya Flat White. I'm going to go all around the aircraft, all around the water effects that I did, and I'm going to go ahead and pick out certain little higher peaks and valleys so that we have a little bit more interest there on the base. This is also going to hopefully give a little bit more of an impression of really churning water and just a lot of agitation. But we're going to jump into another time lapse and do a little bit more work here. I want to add additional cotton balls. I want to go ahead and hook up all the electronics. I want to get the base surround prepped up. So grab my balsa wood, sand it, prime it, paint it with a satin black, and then glue it down to the base itself. Then finally give it a nice shot of gloss around the different areas. Stay tuned guys, we'll be back and hopefully we'll have a finished Catalina ready to show you.
All right, everybody. So we are back. We have a finished 170 second scale Academy PBY Catalina on our homemade custom water base. And I got to tell you, I'm not exactly 100% pleased with how the water base turned out, but I'm glad I tried it and it was a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and show you guys our finished product. Let me grab it here off the shelf and you guys can tell me what you think. So this is the Catalina as it stands now. We are finished with it. It is all hooked up. The motors work. Everything is great. The water base I'm not happy with, but I have have had a lot of fun with the balsa wood. I think that's a really good move to make. And then the switch there is nice and solid, flips on and off, turns on the engines, turns off the engine. So I'm pretty happy with my decision to go ahead and use that as a surround. The cotton balls look a little gimmicky, to be honest. Looks a little bit more like a toy, but you know what? It's okay. I'm learning, I'm trying new things, and there is a bit of an artistic license with this that I haven't quite gained the exact knack for yet. But I'm gonna do more of these. I like the water base idea, so I do wanna go ahead and experiment more. But like I said, I might wanna next time go out and get myself some form of rippling water effects by Woodland Scenics. That should probably help a whole lot more than what I have here at my disposal. A little bit of a close up, you can see the detail there on the Catalina. I like it. I think it looks pretty good. Again, the water base is the one place it kind of gets let down. But you know what? Like I said, I'm learning. I'm still having fun just getting there and getting my hands dirty. So I think it is a good step in the right direction. Using the cotton to kind of add in a little bit more of that froth and a bit more of the, you know, the water spray and all that. I think it's pretty cool. It's an interesting looking vibe using my current supplies. It's the only way I could figure out how to do it. Again, it's a learning curve, guys. So I'm having fun. I think it's okay. At certain angles, it looks actually pretty cool. Other angles, you can tell it doesn't quite look right. But I mean, again, it is what it is, right? We're learning and that's half the fun of it. Again, the switch on the side there was a great move to hook it to that balsa wood because it is super solid. As you can see, you flip it on, propeller spin, you flip it off. It's got a nice positive click sound and the engines go off. So I'm happy with that. That was kind of the whole purpose of this build was to see if I could mount those engines up in the nacelles and I was able to get them done and I like it. So that's pretty cool. I'm actually very proud of that. The undersurface of the base, as you can see, we've got our battery pack in there, which is two AA batteries. We've got all our wiring tacked in with a little bit of hot glue, so we're not gonna flop around all over the place. And then everything else goes out to the switch. The switch is locked in there to the balsa wood, which is hot glued to the side of the base. And so far, mission accomplished. Overall, the kit was fantastic. I had so much fun building the Catalina. It is a big airplane. I had no idea the size this was actually going to be. And I'm glad I went with a smaller base because otherwise this thing would have been massive. It's already pretty big, you know? I also went ahead and took the liberty of adding a little bit more of that Woodland Scenics realistic water down in between the base and the siding. Just wanted to make sure that we didn't have any air gaps or in there and that it would get nicely glued together. The pilots in there, you can kind of see them. You kind of can't either. They're very much obscured. You cannot see the guy in the center of the aircraft at all. He is completely lost. But aside from all of those issues, this was a really fun project and it may not be perfect. It might be slightly unrealistic, but I had fun doing it. And I'm hoping you guys have enjoyed coming along with me on these last 12 episodes. But that is it, guys. We are done. I am super happy. It's going to go up on the shelf there at work because I don't have any room for it here at the house. In terms of other projects coming up, we do have a couple of videos in the back of my mind that I've been working on. So hopefully I'll have something more for you coming up in the next week or two. And I also have another build series that we're bringing back. So it's going to be fun to go ahead and dive on in a couple more projects. But until then, guys, you know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. And we'll see you back here for the next modeling adventure here on Ben Builds. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care and we'll see you soon.